All right, guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. So today I got a little bit different kind of video for you. Uh, some people have been asking us about how we store our food in our pantry and stuff. And I put off making this video because this room is a disaster. So basically, this room is for our pantry and like dry foods storage, as well as our canned goods. But we also use it for our backpacking stuff for our second channel. If you haven't gone over and checked that out, the link's down in the description below. But we like to do a lot of backpacking and outdoorsy type stuff. So all that stuff gets stored in here, as well as all of our canning and like kitchen stuff. Plus, lately, with losing all the weight and stuff, I have uh, squeezed the treadmill and this little mini bike in here and been using those periodically, which every time you use them, you have to move stuff off of them, use it, and then put the stuff back. So this room's in heavy disarray. This is gonna be part of the spring cleaning, but we kind of wanted to show you what it's like and how we store our stuff and what kind of goods we keep on hand constantly and how we keep them. So let's go take a look. All right, so let's just kind of pan around the room here. Got TV, so we can obviously use the treadmill. Exercise bike. On this wall, we've got backpacking stuff over here. And then you can see my big stock pot and different kitchen stuff. Up there, you got your canners. Then the first shelf here. That's all tomato soup. But you can tell we like our tomato soup. Now here you got some applesauce. Canned tomatoes. And then here, this is chicken wing sauce. We made our cauliflower wings with this. You can get this at Dollar Tree. This stuff is delicious and cheap. So sometimes hard to buy in our hometown. So Missy goes to work. She hits the Dollar Tree down there and buys it by the case. So moving down. Now here's more tomatoes. I believe there's some salsa back here in the middle and more tomatoes. And then of course down here, Big jars of tomatoes for when we make big old batches of soups and then more canned tomatoes. Next year we're going to go heavier on salsa because we're doing pretty good. Now, these protein containers don't have protein in them. We reuse these containers and I'm going to show you why while we're down here. Because these containers are like overfill storage containers, which means that if we don't have enough small containers for big things we're buying, then we put them in here. This is not optimal storage. This is just short term storage. We also do do it in buckets if we need to. But right now these are just short term. But just to show you. This is oatmeal. Rolled oats. We buy these from the Amish. This bag's like $20 for that huge huge bag of oats so basically we are offloading these into these and that's how we store them now in this one it's kind of a mess my granddaughter helped me last time that's flour So we put those in there just temporarily. Like I said, we've got buckets too, but we fill those up. All right, moving on here. There's always an array of empty jars all over the place. All right, here we go up here. So beginning of this year, that was gold. Now we don't buy large amounts of toilet paper from the store. Um, my dad has a guy that we buy trash bags, paper towels, toilet paper, and more trash bags in bulk because he works at like a sanitation supply center. So we can buy those like toilet paper for a case for like $20, huge boxes. So 
even before all this stuff happened, we already had that in bulk. We buy about twice a year, we're done, and that's all you need for the whole house. And obviously, the kids live with us, so they use a lot. But then up here, we have some other dried goods, sugar, which it's like a rock because we don't use sugar very often. Pretty much everything's done with stevia now. A couple jars of jelly, little this, little of that. New bike pack that's never been used. <laughs> this is usually like our canned goods area. Obviously, as you can see, we've been using a lot of them up to get rid of some old stock. But, you know, just normal flats of like corn, tomato paste, medicine for the granddaughter if she needs it, some tuna, canned mackerel, more tomato soup. That's uh, canned venison, some noodles, protein pancake mix. Now, you can see the container here is empty. That's like I said, so I'll need to go over and fill that up with oats and get it out in the living room. Now here we got some pickles. Everything as you can see is dated. Some various jellies, like that's apple butter. That is blackberry jam. You got some relishes, some canned pears, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Looks like apple pie filling, apple sauce, pear sauce. So come down the next level here. And we've got all kinds of pickles, some more tomato, nope, that's ketchup, homemade ketchup, which I love my wife, but I do not like her homemade ketchup, just me. Salsa. This is unsweetened applesauce. This is what we do a lot of our healthy cooking with in order to get the calories down. So basically it just uses the natural sugars and the apples and nothing added, but it really doesn't taste that different. You guys would be real surprised. And that stuff's expensive if you buy it. Uh, this is just a dill relish. I love relish on everything. So moving on along, there's another applesauce that goes up there. We've got all these are green beans as well as all of these so that's kind of my next thing I've been working on as you can see I ate all the canned goods up now we're starting to eat up all the green beans and then if you come over here this is only on here because it was on top of the other two back there and I knew you guys would want to be able to see it but this is our dry goods now if you guys don't know you can go to Dollar Tree and get this brown rice for a dollar it's like two pounds and I'm gonna tell you that I don't care where you shop at least I haven't been able to find I haven't checked Costco or Sam's Club but as far as per ounce there is no cheaper I've found than this so if you like brown rice you're looking for a cheap easy alternative grab this now we also buy our white in bulk that's still not a better deal though than this but you've got you know, we keep our pinto beans, great northerns, there's all kinds of beans in here, black beans for our black bean burgers we make, <sighs> got our good old lentils, some ramen, that's some sugar, lots of red beans, I'm a big fan of red beans and rice. And like making meal preps with them, you add in the green beans from over there, and it just works out perfect. It's a nice, easy, healthy meal to have. I usually try to keep a lot on hand, some salt and some other things in there. Just your normal kitchen dry good stuff. So there's that. Over here, you'll see we got all of our canning jars that we've emptied, and that's what's in these two as well. And then my wife stores her lids this way because we found that if we put them in a box or something that sometimes th things will get in there and get all over them. I don't know. That's just the way she's found that's made it quite easy for her to store and continually keep all her lids put away. She also has them separated by the size to so the big ones and little ones. But yeah, the closet's a giant mess with backpacking stuff as you can see. So overall... It's kind of a chaos in here, but it works. Okay, so as you can see, 
need to do a lot of work on organization and downsizing in here. There is absolutely no doubt about that. I'll be honest, we didn't have to do a whole lot of shopping at the beginning of 2020 when everybody kind of hit freak out factor. Um, we were pretty well stocked up. Most of the things though that you're seeing here now are replenishments, like things that we've redone through this year because we ate up all the old stuff. So like all these tomatoes are pretty much new. We had already eaten that many tomatoes this year at the beginning of the year. We already had this many on the shelf. Pretty much the same with the green beans and the, the canned meats. We actually used to have a bunch of canned meats. We've been eating them throughout the year this year. And then the dry goods that are in here, like the beans and stuff, we had about half that much when 2020, you know, things hit the fan. And now we've just doubled up. It never hurts to have them. It's just easier than going to the store more often. Now, the large amounts of flour and oatmeal, we had been on that oatmeal kick because we eat oatmeal like twice a day now. But buying the big old bag of flour, that's not really normal for us. But when we found out you could buy that for like seven or eight bucks versus like three or four bucks for a regular little five pound bag, that was a no brainer. Now, the problem is using it all up. So basically we have to make a lot of changes to this room. We've got to make it all fit better, more comfortable, you know, just put things away, get rid of things we don't need. I had four dehydrators. I already gave one away and sold one. Nobody needs four dehydrators. I have three meat grinders. Nobody needs three meat grinders. I have a huge box of parts for our apple peeler quarter. I just need to go through this stuff. I have way too much junk. And I even need to go through my backpacking stuff some and at least get more organized. That said, I am completely open if any of you guys got different ideas, you want to share pictures, you want to share videos of your guys' pantry to give us some ideas to improve our system. We have actually a lot of extra room in this house that we could expand and give everything its own room now that most of the kids have moved out. But we're trying to live a little more of a minimalist lifestyle trying to you know not have as much stuff so we want to keep everything that's essential there's no reason to get rid of things like canning stuff but at the same time you don't really need duplicates of everything and you need to have it organized in a way that it's useful you can get to it and it can be utilized if needed so if you guys have any tips tricks ideas or anything else any kind of constructive criticism anything you can put in here go down in the comments if you haven't already, go hit that subscribe button, join the family, be a part of it. And with that said, please hit the like button. It helps get this video in front of more people's eyes. And until next time, we'll see you.